In the center of the screen is your keep. This is where your lord lives. In times to come, it will be at the center of some great battles. First of all, however, let's learn how to control the camera and move about your lands. You move your view by simply pushing the mouse to the edge of the screen in the direction you wish to travel. Using the arrow keys on the keyboard will have a similar effect. Try it now and push the mouse to the edge of the screen. Good. Rotating the camera is great for getting just the right view of your castle. Holding down the mouse wheel and moving your mouse to the left or right will rotate your view as will using the Q and E keys. Try rotating the view now. Great. You can also zoom the view in and out. To do this, spin the mouse wheel forwards or backwards, or use the R and F keys. Try this now. Good. Architect view shows your castle from directly above. This is great for laying out your castle walls and spotting breaches in your defenses. It is activated by pressing the spacebar. Try it now. Good. Now press the spacebar again to return to the normal view. Now that you are familiar with moving about your lands, it's time to get to work building up your castle. To store wood, stone and many other vital resources, every castle needs a stockpile. Left-click on the stockpile icon to select it as the current building to be placed. Now find a flat piece of land where you would like to place the stockpile. Move your mouse over the main screen until your stockpile appears, then left-click to place it. Now that you have a stockpile, you will also need to place a granary to feed your peasants. Left-click on the granary building and move your mouse pointer over the main screen until the granary appears. Then left-click to place it. Well done, my liege. You now have the foundation of your castle economy. I have had some wood and stone placed in your stockpile and some food delivered to your granary. If you look at the front of your keep, you will see a campfire. This is where your peasants will gather to wait for a job in the castle. If we wish to attract peasants to the castle, we need our vital popularity rating to be high. With popularity over 50, peasants will come to the castle and we can expand our operations. Once it is below 50, however, they will start to leave and our economy will suffer. Making changes to the tax rate and food rationing are just two of the ways of manipulating our popularity rating. For more information on the castle, try left-clicking on the reports book. The currently selected report is the popularity report. This shows all of the factors affecting popularity. The overall number indicates how your popularity will change in the coming month. In order to keep your peasants happy, you must provide them with food. It's time to get some of the idle peasants to work producing food. As in this tutorial we are playing the side of King Arthur, we are able to build dairy farms to provide more cheese for our granary. To build dairy farms, switch to the food panel. Now, choose the dairy farm. Good! Now place two dairy farms. Very good. For each dairy farm you placed, a peasant from the keep will change into a farmer, tend and milk his cows and make cheese, which will then be delivered to the granary. Our food stocks will soon start to grow. Now we have more food coming in, let's use it to boost our popularity rating. Left click on the granary building you placed earlier to bring up the granary panel and change your ration level. Good! Now left click on the up arrow to increase the peasant's ration level to extra. Well done my liege! Due to our generous rationing, we are now gaining a big bonus to castle popularity each month. The downside to this is that the peasants are consuming food more quickly than they were before. The bar to the right of the panel will show you the rate at which a unit of food is consumed, or you can simply see the units of food disappear from your granary on the map. This panel also shows exactly how much food we have remaining. As you can see, the peasants have enough food to last them for quite a while. Somewhat disappointingly, however, we only have one type of food coming in. 
Feeding our peasants multiple food types would provide my lord with a small amount of honor. Honor is a most valuable asset to any castle and once acquired can be spent on many important things, such as taking a promotion or creating legendary knights and ferocious beasts. Let's build an apple orchard so that the peasants will be able to eat a diet of both cheese and apples. This will start to bring some honor into the castle. Ah, a slight problem. Look at the stockpile. There is very little wood available to build the apple orchard. We need to place a wood camp to bring in some wood. To build a wood camp, click on the industry panel. Hammer. Now, click on the wood camp icon. Finally, sire, place a wood camp close to the trees. Excellent. Three of our peasants will soon change into woodcutters and proceed to gather wood. Let's sit back and watch our woodcutters until we have enough wood stored to place our orchard. I've spotted another problem, my liege. We now have enough wood to build the orchard, but no peasants left to work there. In order to attract new peasants to the castle, they will need a place to live. Let's increase our population capacity by building an extra hovel. Click on the town buildings menu. Now choose the hovel icon and place a hovel. Good. Now more peasants will soon arrive and make their way to the campfire. Each hovel provides space for eight peasants, and as long as our popularity stays high, the more hovels we build, the more peasants will come to the castle. Okay, now we can build that orchard. Please click on the food panel icon. Now choose the apple orchard from the menu. Now place an orchard. A good idea, my liege, would be to build it close to the granary. That way, the farmer will be able to deliver the apples far more quickly. Good, now the peasants are eating both apples and cheese. You will receive a small bonus to your honor each month that your peasants eat multiple food types. Our current honor levels can be seen on the menu bar and any honor gained is shown as a crown floating above the granary. Now, left click on the keep to bring up the treasury screen. Currently, taxes are set to low. We are receiving some money from peasants each month, but this is generating negative popularity. 
peasants never seem to grasp the value of taxes. We can increase the tax rate by clicking on the up arrow. This will bring in more money for each peasant we have, but castle popularity will take a bigger negative hit each time we increase them. Click on the up arrow to change the tax rate to normal. A good way to increase popularity in times of trouble is to give some money back to the peasants. Clicking on the down arrow will first decrease taxes and then start to give our money away. I personally find this course of action most distressing. Now that the economy is up and running, my lord, we should focus on creating some men-at-arms. First, we will need an armory to store our weapons. To build an armory, click on the defense building's panel. Now, click on the armory icon and place an armory. Good. I have added some spears into the armory. In order to build troops, you will need a barracks, so place one now. Excellent! Now we are ready to create some troops. Left click on the barracks to bring up the barracks panel. At the moment we have the resources to raise just one troop type, a man-at-arms who needs both gold and a spear. Click on the man-at-arms icon four times. This will create four men-at-arms who will form up at the barracks. You can create troops as long as you have the required weapons, gold and have free peasants available. Maybe now we should get the troops into action. To select a single unit, merely left-click on him. He will greet you and wait for your commands. To select multiple units, press and hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse to create a box. Any units caught inside the box will be selected. My liege, why don't you try and drag a box around your men-at-arms now? To move the men-at-arms, right-click on the ground where you would like them to move to. For now, we need to move the soldiers to the red flag near the bridge. Forward, men! Keep ranks! Now, with your unit still selected, scroll slightly to the north of your current position. You will find a small bandit camp currently being guarded by some rogue bandits. Move your mouse over the bandits until your mouse cursor turns into a sword. This is the attack cursor. Now, right-click on the bandits, and your men-at-arms will move to engage them and battle will commence. March! We can't see a path! Move out! For now, I would advise that we destroy the bandit camp to stop any more cursed bandits from posing a threat to our castle. Select your men-at-arms and move your cursor over the bandit camp until the camp turns red. Now, right-click on the camp and our men-at-arms will attack. Excellent! With the bandits out of the way, commerce is free to flourish. A good way to boost our economy is to control extra village estates. Scroll until you reach the ice estate. Then move your troops near the flagpole to capture the estate. <laughs> 